Hey everybody, this is Perch. Let's reach into the mailbag. And this one uh, asks, a, I, I think, a interesting question. I'll give you my take on it. I suspect a lot of you will have different answers. But maybe it's something to think about. Maybe in kind of having your different answer, it will be it'll be interesting for you to kind of just ponder one around. And the, the mail basically goes like this. It says, uh, hey Perch, I'm curious. If I look on YouTube, I see a lot of comic creators repeated over and over as frequent punching targets. I'm not saying they don't deserve it. My question is, why do just these people deserve it? Or why is it the same people over and over? Because I hear a lot of your commentators, commentators, commenters, I think you mean, it's, it, it, maybe I'm reading it wrong. No, it says commentator. I hear a lot of your commentators say that uh, the comic industry is rotted, it's broken beyond all repair, and there's no way to save it, which means that the majority of people in it are problems. And yet, when I look at the videos that a lot of different channels and people make, or the tweets that people do, it is pretty much all Heather Antos, Vita Ayala, occasionally Tom King, maybe Dan Slott, and then a very small handful of others. If I go back a couple years, there was Mags Visaggio, Max Bemis, Gina, Car Gina Carrero. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Gina Carrero is not a comic uh, writer or artist and is the um, kind of the uh, uh, co-star co um, supporting actor, actress, supporting actress in uh, Mandalorian who is no longer with the show. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not getting the Gina type anger. And if they are the problem, and only the problem, then I'd say comics is in pretty good shape because there are hundreds of people in comics. I know you've sort of made this point before, but curious what you think. Um, okay, so there's okay, so there's just it, it helps if you kind of just logically break apart the that that mail into pieces, and uh, then you could kind of tackle them one by one. So first off. Um, I think it is a, a true statement, a accurate statement, uh, that a lot of the commentary online, a lot of the criticism of comics tends to center around the same people. And there are some people that tend to always get it, and then some people that don't. And I'll give you an example. Um, right now, at Marvel Comics, uh, Vita Ayala is doing uh, very little to nothing. I think the only Vita comic that is out there is the Double Trouble one written with Mariko Tamaki that was written for digital and is now getting printed. But that, that, that is not a new comic. That thing's been in the bag for a while. And, um, and, and yet, uh, Danny Lore, for example, has a new series coming out. Uh, we've got to do a video on that one of, uh, the daughter of blade. And, uh, but you see very little about Danny Lore. If you go to Twitter and you look at the Twitter feeds, I would say, you know, in my book, Pound for Pound, uh, Danny Lore's Twitter feed is far more insane than Vita's, um, but but maybe not as aggressive toward customers. It still is at times, but uh, Vita, I think, tends to point out more of the, all y'all, I got people who are uh, hating on me or whatever. Like, you get more of, of kind of critique about uh, customers and fans and kind of who's good, who's bad, etc. Danny does some of that. But the, the, cra the, the crazy stuff on there is just kind of all over the place. It's, it's in different directions. Um, but regardless, um, I, 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 you don't see a lot of Danny Lore. You see some, but nowhere close to Vita. And yet Danny has an active book at Marvel and has had a couple active projects. Uh, Vita, Vita does not. So why then? Why, why one and not the other? Um, Teeny Howard, I think, gets quite a bit of uh, critique and yet, uh, right now, uh, what is it, the, the Legionnaires, that Legion of X book? Um, I, as I've read all the X books, and granted, uh, Teeny doesn't have one, uh, they're all painful to me. But I, I will put that, uh, I think it's Ice Spurrier, right? That, that book uh, is, uh, I, I mean, I read the, the last issue, and I'm like, I, I do not, this is not for me. We'll just put it that way. Hands down, not for me. Um, but you don't see a lot on them. I, I think uh, you'll see stuff on, you don't see a lot on Dan Slott. I mean, to be honest, every now and then you see something on him, but you don't see a lot there. You see a lot more on Tom King. Dan Slott uh, outsells Tom King and is on more books than Tom King. Tom King is kind of relegated to uh, limited seriesville, and a lot of the characters and things he takes on are not 
you know, major characters anymore. So, you know, Human Target is not going to be a top selling book, no matter who you have attached to it. Uh, but, but, you know, you'll see a lot more Tom King. Uh, you'll see a lot of Brian Michael Bendis. But there's another one where Bendis does not have a lot of mainstream comic work right now. Um, every now and then, actually, you, I would say you see more. Well, here's an example. I'd say you see more videos commenting on various shenanigans of Mags Visaggio than Jason Aaron. And uh, Mags uh, has no real, no comics really out right now. Nothing, nothing, nothing significant and hasn't for a while. And uh, Jason Aaron, of course, is, is doing the Avengers. And that's not a loved run. Like people just like that run. So it's not like, well, he's being left alone because, you know, he, he, yeah, his comics are good and everybody loves them. I think a lot of people really hate this current run of Avengers, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, Al Ewing's blocked all kinds of people, but you, you rarely see videos about him. So what, what is the common DNA there? Um, so I'll, I'll take a shot at it. I think uh, a lot of people would say, and I've seen people say, well, you know, the answer to that is their skin color, the people, but that doesn't quite track. Because, again, Tom King, last I checked, is white. Uh, Mags is white. Now, of course, maybe you could say it's a trans uh, setting there. But then again, what's what's Tom King? Why does Tom King get far more uh, dislike and, and anger than, say, you know, than, say, Dan Slott? You know, I, I would say Tom King uh, gets, gets more uh, dislike than, I don't know, uh, John Ridley, current, current writer of I Am Batman. Um, why? I mean, Tom King is white, John Ridley. So if your argument is, well, the people who are criticizing them on Twitter and YouTube, it's, it's just racism. They're, they're, they're attacking the, uh, the black and the brown people more. I, I don't know. It's, you know, Matt, I, I, I understand why that's a, a popular argument you want to make, but I don't think statistically it actually holds up. Um, you know, Heather Antos is white and I believe, and as lost I check straight, although maybe I, I don't know, who knows what, old Antos gets up to, but the other is white. So, I mean, so then is it misogyny? Well, I mean, I, like I said, you could, you could make, and I know a lot of people, why I'm bringing this up is a lot of people do give that as the reason it's racism, it's sexism, etc. But, but again, if you look at the, the main people who get beat up uh, a lot, who have oh, a lot of videos and comments on, it doesn't map to that theory. It just doesn't. So, you know what? So what? So what is the answer there? I do agree with one part of this. I completely agree. And I, just for the record, just just saying it, like I said earlier, it's definitely out of whack for you know hundreds, if not thousands, of people who work in comics. And it does tend to be the same dozen topics over and over and over again. It doesn't it? It tends to it tends to be the same dozen people. If that, I think I'm being kind of generous when I say doesn't. I think, I, you know, you have to put a gun to your head if you're, you're getting to more than six. Um, so here's, here's my theory. And I'm not, I'm not putting a right or a wrong or is this fair or unfair or any of that. I'm just like, you know, you asked, here's, here's, a, here's my as straightforward of an answer as I can give you based on what I think. And this is where in the comments below, you can certainly put your answers of what you think. If you accept the premise is true, and it'd be hard not to, that there's a you know relatively small handful of comic creators that get attacked, or or they get talked about. Let's not even use the the word attacked. Let's just say talked about. Um, I I think it'd be very hard not to say that's the case. Again, a, a very cursory look at YouTube and Twitter will tell you the tale. I think it's so. In my mind, there's kind of three re, three big reasons why those people get it more than others. Number one. Though a lot of those people are the ones who have been more directly antagonistic, meaning they fed the fight. Oh, here's another one. That's uh, Mark Brooks. Okay, again, white guy, white male, uh, Mark Brooks. So why why does Mark Brooks get a lot of it? Well, I think the, the clue is in this first reason. It's these people have kind of gone out of their way to you know punch back online. Who they've they've in other words, maybe put it a different way, they've fed the algorithm. They have created statements and comments like punching back at some of uh, what they perceive as, you know, negativity in comics. And therefore they're, they're, they're handing material to YouTubers to work with, you know, when, um, you know, when, when Mark Brooks, you know, spazzes out about AI art or uh, toxic fans, or whatever it happens to be, um, he doesn't do so in a way like it's, it's very easy not to get attention. You know, despite people's comments, not a lot of people talk about Scott Snyder. 
in this regard. You know, they don't talk about him this way. Now, Snyder has said, you know, I condemn hate. He's talked about, uh, I think he's even written CG is a hate group. Maybe he hasn't. I'm not sure. But I, he did that pledge thing. And I think he said this. But he doesn't add the extra 500 tweets that go, uh, and reminder, I said this week ago, and I'm saying it again, and I enjoy dunking on the chuds. And, you know, Snyder doesn't do that. So, therefore, he's not giving material. He's not handing material over, even though Snyder is a much bigger name than most of these people in, in comics. So that I think that's a big part of it. So a lot of the, the people who get, you know, beat up or attacked or, again, not even just talked about, uh, they're, they're giving people something to talk about. And then people do. So I think that's, uh, that's you know, that's reason number one. Um, reason number two, I think, is is a little bit kind of the, the snake eating its own tail, which is somebody, a bigger YouTuber, let's say, um, I, I don't know, a, a just some guy will make a video about Max. And uh, that, you know, just some guy gets, you know, basically makes that video. It gets 60,000 views. Tons of the smaller YouTubers are like, that's the way you get the money. It's, uh, you know, that, that look, he got 60,000 views. I want a piece of that. And so they make uh, the same video. Basically they go, or, you know, they, they're not looking into a lot of these, these, uh, comic writers and artists. They're, you know, they're, they're basically, I mean, I don't mean this is lazy. It's just like, they listen to the video. They're like, I, and I have a take on this. And then they, they give their take. I think that's, that's, you know, a pretty, pretty common culprit of all this. So, I, I think that, you know, I, the more you see, like, the big YouTubers do occasional videos on specific people, uh, then hundreds of smaller YouTubers will also do a video on that person, and then, you know, that it just kind of builds the mass. That's what happens. And then people keep, keep, going, keep going to it. Um, the last reason is probably the most flimsy of the things I give you. Why, why, this, why these particular people? I, again, you'll have to work with me here because I, I think I'll describe this poorly. But have you ever met, you know, I, I hate, okay, I'm going to say it this way and you're, I, I hate, I hate even what I'm about to say because it's, it's way too extreme. But you ever met somebody in your life who has a, for lack of a better word, a punchable face? It used to be a term people would say. Somebody just like, you didn't know why, but you just, you're, they just irritated you. The um, uh, abusey, uh father and son. Um, I remember people in Hollywood said that, you know, it's good casting them as kind of an antagonist because they have just a punchable face or a punchable personality. Now, obviously, you don't want to go punch these person. We're not calling for violence. But some of these people in how they talk, the personality is such that it, it, you, it, it just people want to, you know, get pissed off. It's just the way they it's, it's the way they sound. It's the way they talk. I remember, I don't know, years ago, I don't, maybe, I don't know, a long time ago. Uh, Zach first discovered this channel, and I remember he made a comment like, uh, I'd, I've never met Perch, or I haven't listened to much Perch, but uh, I know I would hate him. Or I, he reminds me of like a like the teacher you just hated, like the teacher you just didn't like, or I, I, I don't remember, just something negative, like it just, it, something in his voice just sucks, basically, was, was the comment. Now, uh, iron, ironic in, the, in everything that's happened since, but, but that, uh, some people are like that. They have just a, you know, for whatever reason, they've got a voice or an inflection or just something that just, it, it just, it's not for you. And it, it makes, it just makes you agitated just listening to it. And I think that, uh, I realize I'm opening myself for all kinds of comments with this, but you know, you ask a question I'm trying to answer honestly, it's what I do. Um, I think that, that some of the people, um, like Tom King in some cases, when you look at kind of his interviews and what he writes and everything, I think Vita is another one where just there's there's a way that they talk especially in like real life interviews that just it it it's like you know it's it's chewing on tinfoil it's it's there's something about it that just irks in the personality and uh that's i'm not saying it's fair it's a, in many cases these people it's it's completely subconscious it's just it's it it you know nothing they didn't cause this but I think that there's a little bit of that effect too some of the people just just beg and then when you combine that like a mags I, I think if you listen to mags do interviews or Kelly Sue DeConnick's another great one you listen to him in interviews you're like oh, just it's like if this was a movie they would be casting you as kind of the annoying Karen in this movie that just it's it's 
It's like why you cast, you know, Busey, Busey in, um, in, a, in a role. You're just, you're, you're trying to go for the cheap antagonistic piece. And if you combine that with a lot of like, uh, what was some, you know, mags would post, like, we're going to trans all your kids. Like, you know people are going to get pissed at that. It's going to give you attention, negative attention. If you combine it with the personality, it just kind of naturally draws kind of crazed attention, then, yeah, it's going to draw attention. So that's that's my guess. I may be wrong, and I'm, I'm perfectly willing to say I'm wrong. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, do you First of all, do you agree with the premise that it's a pretty small handful of people that tend to get all the attention? And then why? Why, the, why those people? And I want to end the video with this because there's a little point tucked away in there that I think is valuable and important to constantly reinforce. And that's, there are thousands of people in comics. Hey, do you notice that, um, you know, the majority of them are not annoying? You know, you may not like their books. That's a different story. But, you know, you notice that, you know, by and large, if we're saying these are the people who are the major problems in comics, well, we're actually in fairly good shape because you're not, you're not even at a, you know, one tenth of a percent of the people who are actually in this business that you're complaining about. So, you know, <laughs> something to think about. Doesn't mean there's still not problems. There are problems and on and on it goes. But it is true that the big irksome people that drive everybody crazy, it's a pretty small number as far as we know. Maybe if we got to know more of these people, we'd, we'd be irritated by a lot more. Certainly possible. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and thanks for listening.